You are welcome to Kevish Kube Temple. Today, we are going to look at part one of volumetric analysis. In general, this topic is considered under quantitative analysis. So, under quantitative analysis, we are going to look at volumetric analysis. Technically, you look at part one of volumetric analysis. Somebody may ask, what is meant by the concept of analysis in chemistry? Join me to the board. Analysis as a chemical concept involves Two things. Analysis as a chemical concept involves two things. One, the determination of the composition of substances. So we are going to look at the actual composition of substances so that we know which nature of substance is that. Two, the determination of the reacting masses. Of substances. So we are also going to look at two or more substances interacting. And then with what mass are they interacting with? That is what we are going to also consider. We can also go through analysis and determine that. Therefore, we have two common experimental procedures that always aids us in terms of going through this form of analysis. One, gravimetric analysis. Gravimetric analysis, what comes into mind? You know, the root word is gravity. And then from gravity, we also know that when we talk about gravity, we are talking about the weight, the force, exerted on a body. So, technically, you look at the weight. Gravimetric analysis requires weighing of the reactant substances and the product that we form. So, we'll be looking at weighing of substances, that is the reactant substances, and then the product that will be formed out of it. Two, volumetric analysis. In this analysis, the amount of substance dissolved in a given solution can be estimated how? By determining what volume of solution is required to react with a given solution whose concentration is known. So we'll be looking at technically a solution. which is specifically assigned as a standard form of solution against a standardized solution. So that is a solution whose concentration is known. That is the standardized one. Note, this can be achieved by titrating a standard 
solution against the other. That is why I said we are going to look at two substances. One is stylized and then one is what? Unstylized. Join me to perform a little form of practical to understand the nature of certain solutions. How they behave in the presence of indicators. How they behave in the presence of indicators. You realize that the nature of a particular solution is revealed when you introduce a specific indicator into a specific solution so that we understand the composition that is the theoretical composition of that substance so to understand the theoretical composition of that substance we need to perform some small practical to understand the nature of the substances we'll be dealing with and then also the indicators that we'll be dealing with in fact, we are not going to um, treat indicator under this part. It should be treated further in another part. But we just want to understand the composition of certain substances. Therefore, we turn to our madam, who will help us understand the nature of certain substances in the presence of certain indicators. Let me introduce you to some few apparatus, stroke material that will be necessary for us to perform this form of practical. But I first want to introduce our Madame, Madame Abna Prempe Jennifer. She is going to help us with the form of practical we are going to perform today. So as I said earlier, I want to introduce you to some few material that will be easy. We have here the particle flask, and then we have our indicator bottle, which contains an indicator. The name of the indicator in this bottle is phenolphthalein. And then we also have another indicator bottle, which also contains metal orange. We have our reagent bottle, which also contains solution B. We also have another reagent bottle, which contains solution A. We have beakers around. We have our dropping pipette. So this is a dropping pipette. This will help us to pick some few centimeter cubes of the, either the phenolphthalein or the metal orange. We'll be using a dropping pipette. We also have pipette with a flip. So this is the pipette flip. We commonly call it pipette filler. Let me give you some small story, uh, story or history about um, this form of flip. The history behind this is that at first we used to put our mouth to the mouthpiece. So this is the pipette and then this is the mouthpiece. We put our mouth to the mouthpiece, then we pipette or we suck the solution to measure the specific volume we want to measure specifically 25 cm cube since this is 25 ml by bed students used to suck and at the end of the day drink most of the solution or consume most of the solution we don't want that thing to happen therefore it was necessary for us to introduce the pipette filler or the filler so our uh, madam We'll be using the pipette filler. For you to see how the pipette filler is used to pick the 25 centimeter cube of a particular solution. To perform that practice for you, 
before we start with our main um, um, practical. We also have, so, um, that is the funnel. Now, specifically, we call these ones filter funnel because looking at how narrow it is, the filter paper fits in this one very well. So, we mostly put the filter paper in here if you want to go through any form of filtration. Generally, it is a funnel, but specifically, it is a filter funnel. So, our madam will begin with how to acquaint ourselves with the pipette filler. So she's going to use the pipette filler or with the aid of the pipette filler and then the pipette, pick some few drops or let me say specifically, she's going to pick 25 cm cube of this solution, which is water. So, Madam Amina, it's up to you. I will describe how she did it. Okay. Thank you. So you can see how she used it. I'm going to explain the whole thing to you. When the pipette filler already contains air, you have to push the air out. You say deflate. So you push the air out before it can suck. There is a symbol over here that, that indicates suck. And then there is a symbol also over here that indicates eject. So that is how she was able to pick the 25 CMQ. Now, we, we also realize that she picked the solution more than what she was supposed to pick. That is how we do it. You always pick the solution above the calibrated mark. Then you relate to the calibrated mark. That is how we pick um, solution whenever you are using the pipette for your measurement. Our madam again will continue with the determination of the nature of certain solution. I've already told you we have solution A and then solution B. We want to know the nature. Let's assume that we have picked reagent bottles, label solution A, solution B. How do we determine the actual nature? How do you go through that analysis? Our madam is going to help us with that form of analysis. So she will begin. So that is the solution. She's going to begin with solution A. We don't know the nature of the solution. And then she's going to first also introduce metal orange into solution A. She has already pipetted 25 centimeters of that portion of the solution, which is solution A. So she's going to introduce some few drops. Madam, how many are you going to introduce? She says she's going to introduce two. Okay, so she has introduced two. Twelve. Nicely. So we can place it on the white arm. So that we can describe the color very well. 
So on the white cow, we can describe the color very well. You can pause the video and then guess what color this is. If your guess is that the color of bitter orange over here is red, then your guess is right. You are correct. You will explain the theory behind this color. Later. Madam, pick the other solution. That is the same solution, so you should age. This time, she's going to put some few drops of phenolphthalein so that we also know the nature of phenolphthalein in solution A, which will, which will serve as a confirmatory uh, kind of practical for us to know whether what you are doing is right. So the nature of phenolphthalein in solution A, one, two, three. So she added three drops and then she swells. Let me put it over here. You can pause the video and then tell me what color this is. If your guess is that the color in here is colorless, then I must say you are correct. I must say you are correct. Therefore, I said you can further explain the theory behind this color. Let's move to the other solution. That is solution B. In solution B2, we will pick 25 cm3 portions of solution B and then add some few drops of the metal orange first. So, few drops of metal orange. How many drops, madam? Two. Go. So, she added two drops. And the white towel is giving us the specific color, otherwise you may be deceived. So you can guess what color this is. If your guess is that the color in here is yellow, then your guess is right. You are correct. As I told you earlier, you explain the theory behind it. Madam, continue with the other solution. The same solution, solution B. This time, we are going to add some few drops of phenolphthalein. Good. So, she added only two drops. You can pause the video and then guess what color this is. If your guess is that the color in here is deep pink or pink, then your guess is right. Meaning you are correct. Now, we have been able to know the nature and then the colors that will be formed in the various solutions. We are going to explain it bit by bit, one after the other. Madam, pick solution A. Solution A. Wait. That color. Go. Now, solution A. With metal orange. For. Once again, let's take solution A. To see the nature of the colors formed in solution A. In fact, this time, you're going to look at metal orange. We said the color was red. What does it signify? It signifies that the solution A, from theory, is acidic. Metal orange in an acid is red. So it means solution A is acidic in nature, which means the pH ranges from somewhere around 4 downwards below and 2. That is why it has given us this category of color, red. Let's pick the same solution A and then also find out the nature of metal orange in that solution A.
Good. And let's see if you're not standing in it. So this is solution A. Phenolphthalein was placed in here. We realized that the nature of phenolphthalein in here was colorless. Therefore, this also reveals or confirms that solution A is acidic. Why? From theory, we know that phenolphthalein in acidic solution is colorless. That is the confirmation. Thank you, madam. Let's move to solution B. Good. So we are picking metal orange first. Metal orange in the 25 portion, centimeter cube portion of solution B gave us this color, yellow. From theory, this reveals that solution B is also basic in nature. That is why we see that the tower range has given forth this yellow color. Now, let's take solution B again, but with a different indicator for the phenomenal. So, solution B again, 25 centimeter cube portions of that, and then few drops of phenolphthalein in solution B indicates a pink or a deep pink color. This reveals or confirms that solution B is indeed basic. Why? Phenolphthalein in a basic solution forms a pink color. This time is deep or right, but there's no pink. Now let me suggest to you, if you want to note the form of colors, see how real they are, you can go to Google and then punch orange, pink, red, and then so on. You'll find out the description of the colors over there with their features or their images. That one will also help you. Now, we are done with a practical indication in the form of performing the analysis of the nature of the solution we may be dealing with. This time, we are moving to the last part where we are going to look at the mold concept. We are going to look at the mold concept, in short. Now, let's visit the board and then look at the mold concept. Under volumetric analysis, we will look at some few units that will be used for. One, we notice that you'll be looking at concentration. Under volumetric analysis, you'll be looking at concentration of the various solutions. In the concentration of the various solutions, we can realize that concentration can be in two aspects. So concentration in two aspects. Concentration in two aspects. So what concentration in mole per dm cube? That is how we can measure concentration in volumetric analysis in mole per dm cube. Looking at this formula, we will look at some deductions. How to resolve to this formula? So come. In more per dm cube indicates that we have mole on top and then dm cube below. This reveals that we have mole. That is the amount of substance 
It is mostly represented with a particular symbol. N. And then volume, that is what is measured in DMQ. So DMQ denotes volume. So we can also put volume. This means that we can shorten our formula. So we can say N over V in DMQ. My dear students, when you are writing in DMQ, don't write slash DMQ. It specifically means something. If you are supposed to go through dimensional analysis, it means a different thing altogether. Slash means a different thing altogether. But if you say into brackets DMQ, it means the same thing. It means volume is measured in DMQ. Because if you multiply the D by the DMQ, you are going to get the unit attached to it as what? DMQ. But if you say slash, then it means that something over. So you should take note of that. If you are supposed to look at the dimensional analysis, you realize that they are different things altogether. So concentration has given us this formula. The second aspect is concentration in gram per DMQ. This also means this also means gram over DMQ. So we have gram over DMQ. What does it mean? Gram is a unit of measurement. And that is mass. So we use the symbol M. And then DMQ. That is what? Volume. So Specifically, the second one is termed as mass concentration. The second one is termed as mass concentration. We have been able to deduce the various aspects of concentration. Let's also look at the amount of substance that we used over here. So we know. That the amount of substance is always mass over molar mass. That is mass over molar mass. So you realize that we can pick the first concentration, that is concentration in mole per DMQ, and then put in n is equal to m over mr and we'll get the complex form of what formula where we can solve many situations out of it technically you may be confused with the unit of measurement in terms of this you see this place we wrote more let's confirm that why is it more? Now the unit for this M is G and the unit for this is gram per mole. Let's move to mathematics a little bit. This one indicates that we have G divided by G over Mole. In maths, what happens is that when you have any whole number standing, we can make it what a fraction by dividing it by one. So this time, g also divided by one. Now we want to change this one to multiplication so that you can cancel out those things that are very common to them. So multiplication and then this place is m and then that is g. 
at the end, G will cancel G. The diagonals will cancel out. Leaving us with one times mole. So at the end, we have what? Mole. That is why the unit for N is what is a mole. The G cancels out, leaving what? The mole. So that is the amount of substance. Now we have been able to know the concentration and then also the amount of substance. I want to systematically place in our mode into the first equation. So let's label this one as our equation one. And then say this one is equation two. And then say that one is three. So put three into one. So we have C. I'm putting three. So N, so I'm getting mass, molar mass, and then V. So that would be for the concentration. Which means if you want to resolve to concentration, and then you have been given the mass of the substance, and you know the molecular mass of that substance, multiplied by the volume in DMQ, you'll get what? The concentration. So that has also given us this. Now, we can also make mass the subject, and then put it over here in equation 2. So from equation 1, sorry, equation 3, make M. So from equation 3, make M the subject. What are you getting? N MR is equal to M. That is what we are getting. Put put four into two. And then you realize that you have a mass concentration which is N M R all over V. So this also indicates that if you want to calculate for the mass concentration, and then you have the amount of substance, the molecular mass, and then the volume in DMQ, you can also resolve to mass concentration. Also, So concentration in more per DMQ. Is equal to the mass concentration divided by molar mass. So that is mass concentration of the substance is equal to the mass concentration of that same substance divided by the molar mass of that same substance. You don't pick different ones will also divide this. Now let's look at for reacting substances. For reacting substances. Say solution A Solution B for reacting substances. Say solution A 
and then solution B. This time, we will look at their ratios. First, let's look at their mole ratio. If you add solution A to solution B, you look at their mole ratios. So, So for the amore ratio, we can say moles of A is to moles of B is equal to the equivalent moles, say X and then Y. With this, we can find the individual moles of the various solutions. Now, once we have considered the amoles, let's also look at when you have the amole concentration involved. So, for So for their concentration and volume involved, we will look at moles will be equal to concentration times volume. So that is if you make equation one the subject. That is number of moles the subject. You get C B. That is concentration multiplied by Volume. Therefore, let's link to solution A and then solution B. So for A and B, what do we have? We have moles of A is equal to concentration of A, volume of A, and then moles of B divided by concentration of B, volume of B. So technically, that is how we have resolved for the air concentration and volume involved. So that is the formula that you can use. So any of these formulas can be used for the various analysis. Come to think of it, you are supposed to take note of these formulas. You are not supposed to chew them. My dear students, you don't chew these formulas and then pour them. You are supposed to know them. If you know them, they become your friend. So from equation one, equation two, three, and then making each and every one of them the subject so that you can eliminate the other should be part of you. It is not difficult. This is very, very simple. In my next tutorial, I will deal with you as to how to make use of the various formulas that I have written on the board. Don't say, hey, these ones, they are very complex, too much. No. You can make it. Therefore, I believe you will join me in the part two of volumetric analysis where we will talk about indicators the nature of the various indicators and then the particular solutions that is formed at the end of the form of titration that we performing specifically in was and then in any form of exams thank you thanks for watching this video See you in my next tutorial. Bye-bye.